The Sun and the Seeker, Rumi and Shams al-Din of Tabriz, a mystery of devotion, intrigue and Sufism. In the heart of 13th century Konya, a bustling city of traders, scholars and seekers, the air crackled with the vibrancy of intellect and spiritual yearning. Jalal al-Din Muhammad Rumi, a respected theologian and scholar, was seated near a tranquil pool within the madrasa grounds, surrounded by a stack of manuscripts. The rhythmic scratching of his pen against parchment was the only sound in the courtyard. On this particular afternoon, a traveller entered the city gates, his face weathered, his robes plain, but his eyes alight with a brilliance that seemed to see beyond the veils of the material world. He was Shams al-Din of Tabriz, a wandering dervish whose name meant sun. Approaching the scholar, Shams paused, observing him silently for a moment. Then he asked, his voice low but commanding, What are you doing? Rumi, barely looking up, replied dismissively, Something you cannot understand. Shams took a step closer. Without warning, he reached for the pile of manuscripts and hurled them into the pool. Rumi jumped to his feet in shock. What have you done? he exclaimed, rushing to retrieve the soaking books. But as he lifted them from the water, he froze. The pages were dry, unmarred by the water that should have ruined them. What is this sorcery? Rumi demanded, bewildered. Shams met his gaze with a knowing smile. Something you cannot understand. It was the moment their destinies intertwined. Rumi, who had spent a lifetime seeking the divine in books and lectures, saw in Shams a living embodiment of the truth he had been chasing. Rumi invited Shams to stay in his home, and their conversation stretched into the night every night. In Shams, Rumi found not a teacher in the conventional sense, but a mirror, one who reflected his deepest longings and fears. One evening, after hours of discussion, Shams leaned forward and asked, Tell me, Jalal al-Din, why do you seek the divine? To know him, Rumi replied. Shams shook his head. No, you seek him because he already dwells within you. You must stop seeking as though he is far away. The essence of the beloved speaks through you. Rumi fell silent, absorbing the dervish's words. Shams continued, What you seek is seeking you. From that night, the scholar transformed. Rumi began composing poetry, his verses ablaze with devotion and longing. He danced in the streets, losing himself in the whirling motion of the Sema, his spirit rising to realms where intellect could not follow. But not everyone in Konya welcomed this change. Rumi's close disciples, who had once revered him as a scholar, now watched in confusion and envy as their master turned his attention entirely to Shams. Whispers began to spread. Who is this outsider who has bewitched our teacher, they murmured. Rumi belongs to us, not to him. In the madrasa's courtyard, Rumi's eldest son, Sultan Walad, confronted Shams one afternoon. What have you done to my father? he demanded. He was respected a man of reason and order. Now he is unpredictable, even reckless. Shams regarded the younger man calmly. Your father has found the beloved within himself. Would you prefer him to remain asleep? He was ours, Sultan Walad said, his voice trembling with emotion. Now it feels as though we have lost him. Shams sighed. Love demands a price, young man. The fire of devotion burns away the self, and those who cling to the old ways will not understand. But your father is not lost. He is more himself than ever. Despite Shams's words, resentment simmered among Rumi's circle. To them, Shams was an interloper, a threat to the world they had known. One cold evening, as the city of Konya settled into stillness, Shams left Rumi's home to walk beneath the stars. He often disappeared for hours, seeking solitude in the divine's embrace. But this night, he did not return. The next morning, Rumi awoke to find his friend's room empty. Days passed, then weeks. The city buzzed with rumors. Shams has abandoned him. No, he has been murdered. His body thrown into the well. Rumi refused to believe the worst. 
He roamed the streets, calling out Shams' name, his voice echoing through the alleys. Come back to me, Shams, he whispered into the wind. Without you, I am nothing. Months later, a traveller from Damascus arrived in Konya with a startling story. I met a man in the marketplace who called himself Shams of Tabriz, he told Rumi. He spoke of you with great love. Hope rekindled in Rumi's heart. He journeyed to Damascus, but upon reaching the city there was no trace of Shams. As Rumi returned to Konya, he realized that the Shams he sought was not outside himself. The divine presence his friend had revealed still burned within him. Years later, a dying disciple confessed to Sultan Walad. We were the ones who rid the world of Shams, he admitted. We could not bear to see Rumi love him more than us. Sultan Walad carried the weight of this revelation to his father, but Rumi merely smiled. Shams has never left me, he said. He is the sun that rises within my soul each day. The ones who killed him only freed him to become eternal. Rumi continued to write, his poetry flowing like a river, each verse filled with the essence of Shams. His words spoke not of loss, but of unity, not of despair, but of love. Why should I seek? I am the same as he. His essence speaks through me. I have been looking for myself. And so the sun and the seeker became one, their story a beacon for those who yearn to find the divine within. That moon, which the sky ne'er saw even in dreams, has returned, and brought a fire no water can quench. See the body's house and see my soul. This made drunken and that desolate by the cup of his love. When the host of the tavern became my heartmate, my blood turned to wine and my heart to kebab. When the eye is filled with thought of him, a voice arrives. Well done, O flagon, and bravo, wine. Love's fingers tear up, root and stem, every house where sunbeams fall from love. When my heart saw love see of a sudden, and it left me and leapt in, crying, find me. The face of Shamsi Din, Tabriz's glory is the sun in whose track the cloud-like hearts are moving. Oh.